I have my camera in such a precarious setup that if it falls, it's entirely my own fault. I'm going to take a photo so I can show you guys just like what this is. So today I'm going to do a reading vlog. I feel like, I feel so tired right now, even though I had a good night's sleep. I woke up earlier than I usually do just naturally and felt like, yes, smashing it. Um, and now I feel goddamn tired, it's midday. But I want to do a reading vlog. I want to do a reading vlog specifically because I am kind of sick of fiction books. Like, I never thought I'd come to this point, but... I have been reading such pants books that it's just pissing me off, like it's actually just like, what's the point in reading? Um, and really it's just with fiction because I'm reading this excellent non-fiction book, um, it's called Murder, like the biography of murder or something, I hate someone, I will obviously stick the thing up on the screen and now the battery's flashing at me to let's say that the battery's dying, oh my god, but anyway. And this is excellent, like, currently it's a five-star read, like, I don't know how it cannot be a five-star read, it is so good. Um, maybe I'll talk more about that later, but, yeah. And I'm listening to a couple of books on audiobook, like, that's fine, but just my fiction reads lately have just been so rubbish that I'm just, like, so annoyed. Like, about a month ago I was moaning to myself, really, that I hadn't found a five-star read, and then I found a five-star read, and honestly I'm just tempted to read the book again because I'm like, well, clearly, like... <laughs> I don't like any other books. Like, don't get me wrong, there have been some four-star reads this year, which have been really nice, but no, like, oh my god, standout, amazing five-star books, which is really annoying. So I'm going to quickly talk through some books I got from the library, and just my thought process behind them, and then, like, two books that I had purchased from the charity shop, but I'm going to change the battery on this and then do that. All right, we're back. I just decided I would change positions, because if my camera falls, I don't have the money to pay for that hunt, so that's just not happening. So... What I wanted to show, let's do a little a little library haul. Um, show some books that I got from the library on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. I actually went to the library to return two books, um, and that was Luster and The Silent Patient. Luster I gave two stars, The Silent Patient I gave three. I actually really enjoyed The Silent Patient for a book that, like, I've seen so many people talk about. I know it's a thriller and, like, you know, it's not like I didn't expect to enjoy it, it's just... I enjoyed it a lot more than other thriller books so yeah so yeah I was actually just wanting to return some books but then when I got there the return box wasn't there and then I was just like oh well if I'm gonna go in to return the book then I might as well just have a little browse. Last time I was there I actually saw that you could rent out cookery books. This is clearly this has clearly always been a thing but it's not anything that's been in my line of sight when I have been going to libraries so I've never noticed it before but I was like, cool, maybe next time I'll borrow a book. And then as I walked in, one, and they have some of their displays, one of the books was this, which is The Dopamine Diet, The Low Carb Way to Lose Weight and Feel Good by Tom Kerridge. I just thought his name was Ketteridge, but apparently it's Kerridge. Uh, the only reason this one stuck out to me, is like the dopamine diet thing, I was just like, oh, whatever. But The Low Carb Way is because I have polycystic ovary syndrome, and one of the things they do recommend is low carb. I never stick to it because I love carbs, but I just wanted to see what this book would be like, see if there were some, like, recipes I might be able to get from it. Like, it's the kind of book I would really, like, shy away from buying because there was just so many foods and types of ways that people eat that I don't eat like that. So when I buy cookbooks, I really have to know <laughs> that I'm actually going to get use out of it. So it's a wonderful way to try it from the library. So I flicked through this. Some of them do seem really nice. A lot of it actually does seem quite keto-like, which I guess could be low carb, but low carb and keto are quite different because keto, I think, very much is like 20 grams of carbs, whereas low carb can be a bit higher than that. Um, but a lot of this does seem to be quite keto-like, especially because there are loads of sugar substitutes, so they don't use sugar, and that's one of the things they do in keto. But another book that I picked up in that section is Ainsley's Mediterranean Cookbook, again because a Mediterranean diet is recommended for PCOS, so I thought I'd try that. My problem with that is I don't eat fish, and I think that one of the reasons why it is recommended is because of fish and all the goodness that you get from fish, but I don't like fish. So I picked up those two, so yeah, cookbooks. And then I was just going through and um, picking up some books, and when I got home and looked at them, I re realised all of these books are from authors that I have read works of theirs previously. So if we start with An Orchestra of Minorities by Shigozi Abiyoma, I read, I've completely forgotten the name of it now, oh my god. 
I read The Fisherman by him, not last year, probably the year before, I want to say. Could have been the year before that, I don't know. And this was on my list to read, and like in my Amazon market to buy. And I saw this and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll be picking that up, so that'd be great. So it says here, a young farmer named Chin... Chinoso prevents a woman from falling to her death. Bonded by the strange event, he and Nadali fall in love, but it is but it is a mismatch according to her family who reject him because of his lowly status. Is it love or madness that makes Chinoso think he can change his destiny? Set across Nigeria and Cyprus, an orchestra of minorities written in the mythic style of the Igbo tradition weaves a heart-wrenching tale about fate versus free will. So I'm really looking forward to reading that. Don't know if it's going to be the next five star read, but considering The Fisherman was, I think I gave it four stars The Fisherman because it made me very sad. Um, I'm very happy to try and like revisit an author I've already read something by before. The next one I picked up was The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. So I did a review of her book, there's something in my eye, oh my god, Blue Ticket. I don't think it was last year, I think it was the year before because I had wanted to read The Water Cure, but I hadn't got around to it, but then on NetGalley, uh, her next book was available for um, an advanced reader's copy, so I picked that up. Didn't really like it, but then saw The Water Cure, it was still on my list to read. I think it's because this was shortlisted for The Man Booker. Well, clearly not this version, they don't have it. This was clearly bought before that. Um, that's why I wanted to read it. The, oh yeah, so yeah, Orchestra of Minorities as well, but I don't know if they were shortlisted in the same year. I will, if it, if they are, I'll put it on the screen. Um, so whilst it was there, I thought, why not? I'll just pick it up because yeah, it's part of the library package. I can get, do, I can do that. Um, so it says here, you are a girl, your body is vulnerable. Men will break it if they can, and out there they absolutely will. Bodies must be controlled in order to be safe. Suffering will prepare you for the worst. The cure is nothing compared to what you've been spared in this sickness. It takes a lot of love to hurt you like this. Now come outside, it's time to play the drowning game. Perhaps I'm sensing a bit of theme, a bit of a theme in how she writes. Perhaps they're about like, oh uh, yeah. So it's about women and their bodies, yeah. There's a bit more of a blurb in here. Imagine a world very close to our own where women are not safe in their bodies, where desperate measures are required to raise a daughter. This is a story of Grace, Leah and Skye kept apart from the world for their own good and taught the terrible things that every woman must learn about love. And it is a story of men who come to find them. Three strangers washed up by the sea, their gaze is hungry and assist insistent, training desire and destruction in their wake. Because the... Blue Ticket was also about women and like sort of choice and sex and love and having kids and that about women's bodies so I'm kind of getting like dystopian fiction a lot from it, this but I feel like I might enjoy this a lot more than Blue Ticket but we'll see and then the final one was is an author that I have wrote about a lot on this channel but I don't think I no I have actively read a book by him during my time I actually have a copy of that book here one second that's half a world away. I was actually given this by a friend because she didn't want it. So I was like, yes, I'm taking it. I've already read it, but I'm going to read it again. So I picked up The Man I Think I Know by Mike Gale. Um, Joe did a really good review for this on Goodreads. Um, and yeah, we both enjoy Mike Gale's writing. And yeah, her, her review was so good. I actually link her review down in the description bottom, the description box down below. Um, but yeah, once I saw this, I was like, at least, if I don't like the other two, I know I would like this Mike Gale novel. It won't be a five star read, but... I know, I mean, I don't know that it won't be a five sorry, that's such a lie, um, but I know I like his writing style and I always find some, some sort of comfort in his writing, so I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to pick that up. So those are the five books that I picked up from the library. I think the reason I was harassing my library is because I've been out here on a DNFing spree recently, like I have just had books that I haven't enjoyed and I'm just like, I'm not going to continue to read this. One of them is quite bad because it's a book for a book club that I'm part of is like this Glasgow girls book club and it was one of the suggestions from one of the girls it was like one of her favorite books I I got 20% into the book and just decided to DNF it it was not going to be a book for me um and rather than, I think the book is 600 pages, so rather read a book that's 600 pages and that I'm not enjoying, I was just like, I'm just not going to read it. Um, so yeah, and then before that I DNF the poetry collection, She Will Saw, which is annoying because I, not annoying, which is just not great because I had really enjoyed the previous collection I had read before, but I can't remember what it's called, but it has a different cover and it's different poems. Um, and then I'd already... 
earlier in June as well, Dianette, another book, um, which is how we are translated. So, uh, I was a bit like, hmm. I'm also reading another book, which is the other half of Augusta Hope, which I know I'm going to DNF because I'm not really enjoying it. I feel really flustered making this intro. It just all oh, seems to be going wrong at the moment, but we're going to film it and see. Like, I feel dead tired. I just noticed my microphone's been on the side, so I don't know how good any of what I said has been. Yeah. So, I also went to the charity shop last week before I went to the library and ended up picking up these two books. This was on my list, The Tidal Zone by Zara, Sarah Moss. Um, I don't know what book of hers people were talking about last year or the year before they were talking about one of her books, but then they kept mentioning this book as well that they had read. Or maybe it was this book they were talking about. So it says here, on a day like any other, Adam receives a call from his daughter's school. Miriam, his Miriam, his bl <laughs> Miriam, his brilliant 15 year old has collapsed and ceased breathing. Her heart has inexplic inexplicably stopped. Um, and I think it goes on to actually say that, like, she does wake up, um, and it's about what happened, maybe? I don't really know. I think this is something to do with, like, Greek myth or something like that. I could be completely wrong. I am trying to remember to cop together things from, like, two years ago, so I don't know entirely. But I picked this up. It was £3.40, I said? £3.49. Um... And yeah, it was on my list and in good condition. And then I also picked up this, which is the Possessing the Secret of Joy by Alice Walker. I just think this looks really nice and it's a nice, good, pristine copy. Um, I have never read The Colour Purple. I think I did try to watch the film many, many, many years ago, like when I was a teenager, but I've heard it's quite sad and yeah, I don't really like to watch sad things. So it's up this. This seems to be about a character who was in The Colour Purple, who was a very minor character. And now this is like her own book and she has um yeah it's her story i think this is actually a lot to do with like sex <laughs> and just, just the practicing of being free um it says it in here you know this is about masturbation i think this one say um experiencing orgasms it says here possessing the secret of joy is a story of tashi an african tribal woman told in tashi's voice and the voice of the people who knew her and loved her it is a shattering account of a young girl whose decision to go through female initiation ceremony has terrible and tragic consequences. Oh, I see, okay. Um, Alice Walker says about this book, when I finished The Colour Purple, I realised that Tashi, a minor character I'd created in this book, had left Africa, but had taken her wound with her to America. I understood it was my duty as an American woman and a human being to stay with her. And there's also a little intro in there. So I'm very intrigued about this. I don't know if this should be like my next read or if I should try and read one of the authors that I have already previously read and read and see if I will enjoy that. I don't know so I'm a bit at a bit of a loss. I just feel very like I need someone to hand me the perfect fiction book so I can just read a couple and then be like okay I'm ready to explore just any book. Um because yeah, the fiction reading do, does not be, like, it's not good. But what I'm gonna do is give the other half of Augusta Hope another read, like another chapter or two. And if I'm still not liking it, then it's just being DNF'd. And then I will go on to one of these. Reading through all of these though, I feel like I'm gonna pick this. Um, who knows? Maybe because Alice Walker is a bit of a classic. Um, you know, she's a very well-known writer. I know it's not this that I'm picking up. I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about this book. Obviously, people talk about it, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about it. So I could still be taking a gamble by doing this, but at this point, I don't know. I'm just ready to read anything. So, yeah. The other thing that I actually picked up that maybe I should also read is this anthology, um, Test Signal. Does that say A-I or A-L? I don't know what that is. Oh... Right, this is so, so dumb. <laughs> ah, obviously this is fine, and this is the AL. I just thought it was all in one line, so that's why. I'm gonna stop this here and maybe talk about this later because I am so frazzled and tired, I can't. What's up guys, I am aware I look like shit. I am so tired today, I woke up at like 4 a.m. for no reason. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that was great, but I did take myself to the gym, um, and then actually I went to Primark and I had to return something, I had to return a bra, um, exchange it for something else, but it also got the cute little bodysuit, which looks super small, but it's obviously like meant to be, like, 
sucking you in and whatnot. But anyway, that is not the purpose of this vlog. So yesterday I realized that it had been over a week since I picked up my camera to vlog since I said that to that time that I was like planning on reading those books. And yesterday I just realized I'm in a reading rut. Like, who is she? Where has this come from? I I don't know the last time I experienced this. Like I really don't remember the last time I experienced something like this. Um definitely not since like I've been on booktube I would say um yeah like I don't want to read anything it's not like a I hate reading or anything like that it's just uh, when I think of books and the books that I have I'm like I don't want to read any of those and I also don't want to buy any new books like whilst I could I'm also not like I'm gonna solve my lack of reading by buying new books I'm just like I'm just not gonna read um so really what I've been doing is playing The Sims and I, I'm about to go and play The Sims now actually. Um, and yeah, like even audiobooks, like, but I think whilst I'm playing The Sims, I'm gonna go back and listen to, get back on my Poirot list and listen to that. Um, just pick up all my clothes from the floor. Uh, what was I gonna say? But there is another book, I was just watching one of Jean's videos and she talked about a book it's called like the history of sex or something like that and they have it as an audiobook on script so i was thinking i might read that i hope my nipples are not in this video wow well, um <laughs> yeah guys i'm in a reading where like i i want to read those books that i showed you from the library whilst like i am happy to read them i'm not picking them up like i'm just not gravitating towards them and I don't know what to do. So I don't really know what this vlog is gonna consist of. I still wanna put it up and like show you the books I got from the library. And it's so funny though, like when you go to the library and we see they're like, this book is due back on like the 28th of August. And I'm like, uh-huh. I will be pressing that renew button online. Like, you know, this book is not coming back on the 28th. Um, and yeah, that might very well be the case because I ain't read any of them, none of them. So yeah, I'm definitely in a reading rut. I, last night it actually, so after I figured out I was in a reading rut, I actually decided to pick up the, murder by kate someone i can't remember and because when you're reading it on the kindle and because the book has um notes and stuff like that um it looks a lot longer than it actually is like i was fine i was on like 79 percent or something like that but actually in reality i literally had about five pages left to read so i finished reading that off last night like which was a pleasant surprise and that's a book i definitely enjoy like i gave it five stars it's honestly one of the best non-fiction books I have ever read and it's simply because of its topic matter that for me makes it one of the best because she's dealing with the law she's dealing with the law of murder in the UK well specifically in England and Wales I would say um and you know to make law accessible to people who haven't studied law but then also applying it to you know really popular cases and talking about cases that you know really help to shape the law like to make that very interesting and accessible to the average person who doesn't have that background like i think that's not an easy thing to do and she does it so well um, i'm definitely going to do a sort of recent reads where i talk about like five star book reviews so definitely stay tuned for that but yeah i finished it last night i rated it today five stars I think it comes out towards the end of this year because that was a net galley arc but oh my god so good so even though i'm like oh i'm in a reading work like as much as i was enjoying reading that like every single time i picked it up i was like i'm really enjoying reading it. i just wasn't naturally gravitating towards reading whereas usually reading is something i really look forward to um so that's just not happening right now but i'm going to try and get back into an audiobook at least and do that whilst i listen to the sims and yeah, I'm going to try and read a book so that this can actually be a real reading vlog, y'all, because right now, it's not. Hey guys, so I thought I would check in on this vlog to talk about this book because I have been reading and I have been reading this book. I am on page 243 in The Man I Think I Know by Mike Gale and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I was really enjoying it. I've gotten to a point where I'm just a bit like, hmm. Um, actually no i've gotten to a point where it's quite sad i passed a point in the middle where i just kind of thought this is dragging on for a bit um but yeah i actually got to a point that's quite sad and like little tears were rolling down my face and when i read half a world away it was one of those emotions that was threatening to come out but i didn't cry but this one there was a little sob i was kind of feeling sorry for myself yesterday as well so it was that so i have been reading this like each day i would say for like the past four or three days and because his writing is just so easy to dive into it's just so easy to follow the story like I'm not having any issues so I feel like I'm really making good progress with this um and I do find myself like wanting to pick it up I still think like after this I just think oh what else am I going to read because I don't want to read something that's so heavy which I think the book by Minority of Orchestras 
um, might be and the water cool just sounds very dystopian I'm not really in the mood for that whereas this is just like a really nice light read. So this book is about two men James and Danny they went to the same secondary school which was like this private secondary school and they were all like destined for really great things um, James had an accident so he was like really successful in selling real estate and stuff like that and um, was actually a member of parliament and then had an accident which they refer to as the incident well he didn't have an accident something happened to him um and he has like abi which is like accidental brain injury i think that's actually what it stands for um and he meets danny in a situation which i don't really want to talk about and spoil because i'm not sure how much the back gives away but he meets danny in a situation and they end up becoming really rapid friends and really like sort of changing each other's lives by challenging challenging each other to do um sort of the things that scare them the most in the case of danny like when you meet him he's just getting his benefits stopped at the benefit center because he just basically is not applying for jobs um and then yeah he's living with his girlfriend who eventually like leaves him because he's just a bit of a waster and it's all because of something that's tied to sort of his past and he, for him he kind of wishes that he actually never even went to this school because he views the progress that he made at this school as the reason why actually he ended up in a certain situation or why a family member ended up in a certain situation that led to him being basically being a waster so there's all sorts of family things that's being confronted and there's a, a lot of gaining independence in here especially for James and it's just really nice to see their friendship come together and see them sort of um oh what's the word I'm looking for see them overcome all these hurdles that they're having so it is a very nice read and it's actually quite a nice read about like two men as well and just it's not very like female focused or anything like that so yes, this is something that I am really enjoying at the moment.